power, while awesome, can be fickle and difficult to behold. It affords you many opportunities, but at the cost of some compromises. And that is the entirety of the story of the ROG Zephyrus Duo 16 2023. It is, no holds barred, the most powerful laptop available in the market today. But it's also probably the one that makes the most compromises just to keep that crown on its head. Hey everybody, I'm Kevin Evangelista and welcome to my review of the ROG Zephyrus Duo 16 2023. And in this video, we're going to ask and try to answer one question. What is the cost of power? But before we continue with the video, let's keep the lights on here in the studio. This video is brought to you by Sneak Attack Design Lab. They're a clothing company that specializes in technical fashion, more commonly known as techwear. And you can see me in their clothes in most of my videos. I've been supporting their brand ever since I met them back in 2019, and now they're returning the favor. Head on over to this link, you can find it in the description as well, to get 10% off your order from their site. Check their clothes out, you're bound to see something badass over there that'll look great on you. Thank you very much to Sneak Attack for this exclusive promo for my viewers. Now, back to the video. As is usual, we start on the outside. The Zephyrus Duo 16 is an all-metal monster of a machine that immediately commands attention and respect in any room you set it in. It's somewhat jarring to behold. You see that it's in a familiar laptop form factor, but then you see that the keyboard is pushed way forward to the edge. The trackpad is all the way to the right side, and there's a huge secondary screen right under the main screen. And ROG's forward-thinking, almost cyberpunk design of the Zephyrus Duo should be lauded. This is a well-thought-out, well-designed, and masterfully built laptop. There are no creaking hinges, no body wobble, no sharp edges, and no loose tolerances. Even pressing down on the ScreenPad Plus, the secondary screen, you're immediately confident that the hinges that prop it up won't buckle underneath the weight of your finger. But as I mentioned earlier, there are compromises all throughout this laptop. To achieve this level of quality, ROG had to use aluminum on all the body panels. Aluminum by itself is light and strong, but anything light in huge amounts will still be heavy, like a kilogram of feathers. At 2.6 kilograms solo and just under 3.2 kilograms with the 330 watt charger, and measuring 35.5 centimeters wide, 26.6 centimeters deep, and 2.05 centimeters tall, you're going to struggle to fit this in your bag and lug it around. For the build, the cost of power is physical. It is a huge, heavy laptop, and it's got no other choice to be a huge, heavy laptop. It's definitely not one to carry around for an extended period of time, unless you're like The Rock. Another compromise is seen in the keyboard and trackpad, where we can obviously see that it's not as ergonomic as other laptops of this size. Everything is pushed to the edge closest to the user. There is no palm rest area. ROG does include the wrist rest out of the box and it definitely helps during typing and mousing, but it's still not enough to make the experience totally comfortable or even welcoming. There's no problem with the keys themselves. If anything, this is the same keyboard that we've seen before on the ROG Strix G16 and it's a good one. It's just that you have to sacrifice some ergonomics just to have the second screen on here. I have to give props to ROG for still including a numpad through the trackpad. That's pretty good. You should actually have this on all of your laptops. Now, I've always made a point that large laptops shouldn't have any excuse for not having great port selections. You've got the space. Use it. And luckily, ROG made no compromises in this area. We get a full array of ports. On the left side, we have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A and Type-C, with the latter also supporting DisplayPort 1.4 out and power delivery up to 100 watts. We get a UFS2 micro SD card reader, which I think should have been just a full size SD card reader, but I digress, and a unified 3.5mm audio jack. The right side is pretty bare, just a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C, also with DisplayPort 1.4 out and power delivery up to 100 watts, which is okay. This is the side where your mousing hand is, so no need to populate it with too many ports. And lastly, at the back, we get the full send an RG45 LAN port another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port, and an HDMI 2.1 FRL out. 
props, ROG. You had space and you filled it out with great ports. That is pretty good. I especially love this HDMI 2.1 FRL out because eh, this laptop is running the RTX 1490. And of course, if you have power like that, you would want to break it out to a larger, more capable display like 4K 120 or 8K 100Hz. And it can do that with an HDMI 2.1 FRL out. Part of what ROG highlights the most with the Zephyrus Duo 16 2023 is the cooling. I mean, they packed it with hot hardware, so of course they have to assure everyone that it's not going to burn down their homes. And I'm happy to report that the ROG Zephyrus Duo did not, in fact, burn down my home. It did make it way toasty though, but technically that's a good sign. Every square inch available to poke vents through, ROG went for. The underside, the sides, underneath the screen pad plus, out the back, all of these have holes for air to go through. So don't be surprised when you run this at full tilt and the ambient temps of your area start rising. This laptop dumps heat out like nobody's business. Before we get to the displays, let's discuss the little camera above it. This for me is one of the better things about this laptop, this 1080p 30fps webcam. It's got some pretty okay image quality, some pretty great mics, but the best thing about it is it supports Windows Hello, so it supports facial recognition login. Short of a 4K shooting resolution, it's got everything you need in a laptop webcam. It's totally usable for work in school, Zoom meetings and whatnot, and of course, you can also do a bit of light streaming with it. Just don't expect it to be your main content creation workhorse. Alright, time for the main event. The display. Or, but better, displays. This is obviously the selling point of the Zephyrus Duo. It has Duo displays. Starting with the main screen, it's a 16-inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 2560 by 1600 resolution, mini LED display that runs at a whopping 240 hertz refresh rate with a 3 millisecond response time. It has a maximum brightness of 1100 nits, supports 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut, and is validated for both Dolby Vision HDR and VESA Display HDR. And finally, it supports AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. Everything is bright, vivid, fast, and responsive. My camera does not do it justice. This is the most baller laptop display I have ever laid eyes on. But still, it has one downside. While it goes without saying that since it's a mini LED screen, you should turn on HDR whenever you can to make the most out of the incredible levels of brightness a panel like this can achieve, this is an OLED, only mini LED, so it's still only just a full array local dimming panel so there is some haloing apparent in dark scenes. It's not as bad as some of the previous laptops with FALD that I've tested, but it's still pretty noticeable in movie watching or in games with very dark areas. Do remember that this is an inherent weakness of the technology and not necessarily ROG's fault. Actually, they've done great work in reducing the amount of haloing, but overall, it's still a top shelf display that won't let you down and it's only made stronger by the ScreenPad Plus. The second screen, officially named the ScreenPad Plus, is a 14-inch, super ultra-wide format, 3840 by 1100 resolution IPS touchscreen that runs at a 60Hz refresh rate and supports stylus input. While it doesn't have the belts and whistles of the main screen, it doesn't really need them. Consider this less of a screen and more of an input expander. It's here not to stand on its own, but as a supporting act to the amazing main screen. Got a presentation? Put it on presenter mode and put your call on one side and your notes on the ScreenPad Plus. Want to have all your controls at the touch of your hand while working? Write your scripts on the main screen and put your playlist controls on one side and your writing notes on the other side. Want to stream? Put your chat and your stream controls on either side of the ScreenPad Plus. Personally, I've been using the second screen when editing my previous videos on the channel. I use the main screen at the top for my previews, and the bottom screen is either a huge timeline or the color grading controls. The possibilities are endless. This screen is effectively a force multiplier for this laptop. And as far as unconventional additions to laptops go, this is one of the better ones. The last thing to tackle in the external features is the speakers. Now, this one caught me off guard. I've been reviewing Asus and ROG laptops for a long time now and their speaker implementations fluctuate from model to model year to year. But the speakers in the Zephyrus Duo, 
Yeah, these are the ones, chief. If anything, they sound closer to a medium-sized Bluetooth speaker than a laptop. It sounds big, it sounds loud, and there's enough bass to boom and ring in the highs to make everything played through it shine. Here it is compared to my JBL Quantum Duo desktop speakers. Yeah, these speakers have some lungs to them. Great job, ROG. Now we're done with the outside, let's head on over to the insides to see what this monster of a laptop brought the party with. The ROG Zephyrus Duo 16 2023 is running the current top shelf AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX processor, which has 16 cores and 32 threads, running at 2.5 GHz with a staggering boost clock of 5.4 GHz. Powering the screens is the ferocious NVIDIA RTX 1490 laptop GPU, currently the most powerful mobile GPU available, with 9728 CUDA cores and 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory. Since this model with me is the top spec one with all the options pre-installed, it's running the maximum available configuration of 64 gigs of DDR5 4800 mega transfers per second RAM, and it's got two sticks of 2TB PCIe4 NVMe M.2 SSD storage, equaling to 4 terabytes. Yeah, this laptop is stacked like no other. It'll run anything, anytime at max settings and have frames left over. We'll talk more about performance numbers later. Opening up the case, we can see the ROG Intelligent Cooling System that keeps the laptop from burning a hole through your lap or your desk, albeit only barely. Like with all ROG gaming laptops, it's using a conductonaut liquid metal thermal interface from Thermal Grizzly on its copper blocks on the CPU, GPU, RAM, and VRMs, which are then connected to five heat pipes, leading all generated heat to heat sinks that have 0.1mm fins to maximize surface area for heat dissipation, which are actively cooled by two arc flow fans. All of this is pretty impressive, but there is still compromise to be seen. Notice the lack of a vapor chamber? Yeah, generally vapor chambers are used alongside heat pipes to more efficiently wick heat away from hot components. The lack of it here in the Zephyrus Duo can be felt, and it certainly hurts the temps of the laptop, but more on that later. The reason I assume why it doesn't have a vapor chamber is space. There's just no more space. Given the dual-sided nature of the arc flow fans and the size of the screen pad plus hinges, ROG would have had to settle for a smaller, denser, thicker vapor chamber to make efficient use of it. Which they didn't have the space for. Yeah. Alright, it's time for some numbers on the screen. Do note that like the Strix G16, the Zephyrus Duo comes with two chargers, a full-size 330W brick and a 100W USB-C power delivery brick. But unlike the Strix G16 review, I opted not to compare the bricks against each other, since the 100 watt brick is so underpowered for the Zephyrus Duo that having performance mode on while plugged into the USB-C PD will still drain the battery and thus is never recommended for use in any heavy workload situation. With that out of the way, let's get to the performance tally. Let's start with synthetic benchmarks. The ROG Zephyrus Duo 16 2023 on the 330 watt brick brought about numbers I've never seen before on any laptop I've ever reviewed. On Cinebench R23, it scored 30,540 points on multi-core and 1,751 points on single-core. Both are strong numbers, showing the prowess of that Ryzen 9 7945HX in both multi-threaded and single-threaded tasks. On 3 Mark Time Spy, it scored 12,938 points on the CPU and 19,609 points on the GPU, garnering an overall score of 17,803 points. Yeah, this is the Zephyrus Duo flaunting its crown for all to see. Heading on over to gaming benchmarks, since I find it needless to test it on the lower power esports titles like Rocket League and Valorant, because the Zephyrus Duo is way overpowered for those games, I opted to test it on the four games I currently have right now that represent a good balance of taxing the CPU and the GPU. I played all games at all maximum settings with DLSS set to auto, and resolution set to the native 2560 by 1600. Starting off with Forza Horizon 5, I went for all maximum settings with the DLSS set to auto, 
and it was able to pull off an average of 127 FPS with a low 1% 1 of 110 FPS. Way past playable and well into enjoyable performance, this is a heavy title that the Zephyrus Duo lifts with little difficulty. Next up we have Dirt 5 All Max Settings, a notoriously CPU heavy title that still taxes even modern systems. On all max settings including ray traced vehicle shadows, the laptop was able to do an average of 117 FPS with a low 1% 1 of 100 FPS. A great show of CPU strength as we've seen in previous laptop reviews that more cores, not necessarily a stronger GPU, help Dirt 5 reach high frame rates. Next up is my current favorite shooter, Battlefield 2042, at all max settings with DLSS Auto. This one is a step up from Dirt 5, wrenching both the CPU and GPU to reach playable frame rates. In this heavy title, the laptop was able to do an average of 92 FPS with a 1% low of 71 FPS. Strong performance, but I personally set DLSS to performance when I'm playing just so I can reach 100 FPS. A low of 71 FPS is cutting it a bit too close for comfort for me. Lastly, we have the heaviest AAA title we have for today, Cyberpunk 2077. This is where we see even the mighty Zephyrus Duo be brought down to its knees. At all max settings, RTX on its highest settings, and DLSS set to auto, it was able to squeeze out an average of 77 FPS with a low 1% 1 of 45 FPS. Look, 77 FPS is playable, but 45 FPS is too low for my taste. I've got a 240Hz screen, and 45 FPS is just 18% of 240Hz. I'm just using 18% of my screen, I can't play like that. Either I'll set DLSS to something more aggressive, or I'm turning down some of the settings. So here comes what I think is the biggest compromise and cost of power ROG has encountered with the ROG Zephyrus Duo 2023. Battery life. Equipped with a measly 90 watt hour battery and running hardware that's better suited to be connected to a car battery, brings about some of the worst battery life I've ever seen on a laptop. I mean, it's obvious, putting two and two together, eh, this is an ultra portable that'll last you all day. But still, with both screens set to 60Hz, half brightness, and in Windows power mode, I just got a little bit over three and a half hours just using Google Chrome and typing out scripts. Turning it to performance mode with everything maxed, I was able to drain out the battery in just 55 minutes. 55 minutes of gameplay. Yeah, it's got a voracious appetite for battery power. And yeah, you're gonna have to stay plugged in for most of the day. Fan noise is insane too. There are only two fans in the system, but since one side of those fans are exposed to open air, underneath the second screen, you can audibly hear it flex all the power it's got. The only way that the Zephyrus Duo can stay absolutely quiet is when you set it an armory crate to fanless operation. But yeah, don't expect it to be doing any heavy lifting in that state, it's mainly just for watching YouTube videos without any noisy fans ruining your experience. Here's the sound of the Zephyrus Duo 16 at max fan speed, which is usually what you'll hear during gameplay. Yeah, when playing a game it sounds like this. Yikes. Good thing ROG includes a pair of headphones in the box because, yeah, that fan noise is rough. It's distracting. But one thing I would like to point out though is there is no coil wine. While it's not a saving grace, it's good that it's not there. And the last thing to tackle before the verdict, the heat. Yes, while this retains the overall form factor of a laptop, don't expect this to sit comfortably in your lap in any way, shape, or form unless you've got some balls or box of steel. On idle, things are alright, with the CPU and GPU sitting at 82 and 55 Celsius comfortably. But once under full load, the CPU and the GPU maxed out at 99 and 89 Celsius respectively. 
it runs hot and it made my work area way toastier than it already is here in the hot hot Philippines. As we've seen, there's a clear-cut answer to our question of what is the cost of power? Beholding the mighty performance of the ROG Zephyrus Duo 16 2023 is going to cost you four things. It's heavy. It's heavy to the point that you're almost going to treat it like a desktop. It's hot. It's hot to the point that unless situations are ideal, it's never going to be a fully comfortable session of gaming or even working. It's a battery hog, meaning for most of the time that you're using it, you're going to be stuck to the wall. And lastly, the price. Coming in at 7,999 US dollars or 380,000 pesos, this laptop is literally the price of a small car. Yes, it's the version with the most bells and whistles and thus costs significantly more than the a la carte models. But even the base model is priced at 2,999 US dollars. So that's still a heck of a number to deduct from your bank account just to get a laptop. Power is pricey. But the expensive experience that the ROG Zephyrus Duo 16, I think, is worth it. If you got the cash and the financial freedom to spend said cash, there isn't much to go wrong with the Zephyrus Duo 16. It's unbelievably fast, it's inhumanely strong, and it's gorgeously stylish. It does have some downsides, but it makes up for it. And it commands a hilarious price tag to go along with all of that. That is the cost of power. And to be honest with you guys, if YouTube was paying me well enough, I would straight up buy one of these for myself. It's that good. So that's my review of the ROG Zephyrus Duo 16 2023. Do you have any questions about this laptop? Leave them down in the comment below. While you're there, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. Also, please stay tuned to the channel. There is new content coming every week. That's it. I'm Kevin Evangelista. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Time to turn on the fan or the air conditioning because I can't breathe. It's so hot.